Okay, everyone, we've finished up uh, creating a layers in our title block. We've finished up setting up text styles and all that. Uh, we haven't created layers for a title block. We've created layers in our template, in our template. So we've created our template. We've saved our template. All this information is right here. Now, what we don't want to do is click here to open our template. We want to start a new file using our template as a go by, as a uh, as the case may be. Let's close all that out. I don't need to see that. Uh, what I'm going to do, and I've told you this before, is so don't ever double click an AutoCAD file to start AutoCAD. That's just, it's not good. Uh, what we are going to do <clears throat> is now that we have our template file created, and you can see it's a template because it has a red icon and it says AutoCAD template over here on the side. I already have AutoCAD open, but I can double click this file and it will create a brand new document in AutoCAD using the settings of the template as a starting point. So we'll have to give this a second to get caught up. Um, I apologize for the system speed. I'm running this uh, on a, a virtual machine and it doesn't, doesn't have the greatest horsepower. It doesn't have the greatest horsepower available. So it takes a few minutes to get caught up. Come on. And it's almost caught up. Yeah, my mouse and my cursor is definitely supposed to be moving a little quicker than that. There we go. I'm going to take this and I'm going to right click on this little area here on the side. I'm going to allow it to dock. I'm going to right click again and I'm going to anchor it on the left. And this will be handy because it means that this little guy is just its going to live here over on the side. It's always going to be there. It's not going to take up any screen real estate when I'm not, when my mouse is not actively on it. So that's pretty handy. Love that. Absolutely love it. Uh, you can tell it's the command line. I'm still loading a couple of things. That's okay. <clears throat> But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start uh, creating the title block. Now, hopefully you guys have the handout that's available on uh, Blackboard. Uh, this is exercise, uh, this is in class exercise four. It's at 11 by 17. This is title block creation. It's got a lot of notes all around it. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to uh, start everything on layer zero. Uh, you'll notice if I expand out my list of available layers, I've got all my layers to choose from. That's exactly what I want, but I'm going to start on layer zero. I'm going to create a rectangle, so REC at the command prompt, and I'm going to start my rectangle at zero comma zero. Zero comma zero. And it's not going to work. Let me get back here. Zero, zero. There we go. Push return. And I want this, uh, I want this uh, title block to be a very specific uh, size. So instead of dragging an operation, which I could do, but you'll notice that my uh, coordinates are tracking with me, I'm going to specify the coordinates that I want. I won't go away. Sometimes these things show up at the most inopportune times. Um, so here we go. Um, I want this to be 34 inches in the x direction, comma, and I want it to be 22 inches in the y direction. So it's going to be 2 foot 10 by 1 foot 10. So this is... There we go. There's my there's my rectangle. I am now going to offset this rectangle. So OF at the command prompt. Specify my distance at nine sixteenths of an inch. And I'm going to offset this rectangle to the inside. All right. I'm done with this offset. I'll push return. I'm going to highlight this rectangle. I'm going to change what layer this rectangle lives on by selecting this drop down list. And I'm going to scroll down the list until I get to G-TBLK. TBLK is short for title block. Now you'll notice as I hold my mouse over these different values, I haven't left clicked yet. I'm getting a live preview as to what this change is going to look like. So I will left click right here. Now this rectangle is on the layer G-TBLK or the title block layer. So I'm going to click Escape. I've unselected my title block and my active layer has changed back to zero. 
This is expected. This is normal behavior. But I want this to be my active layer. I want the title block to be my active layer. So I'm going to highlight, uh, highlight this list again. Uh, nothing's been selected, so I'm actually getting the list. Scroll down in the list until I get to the title block layer, and I'm going to select my title block. Now this is my active layer. Okay. I'm going to select my title block. I'm going to click on the middle grip icon. Now I can either move my mouse over to, to select stretch, or I can just left click at this point, and that's fine. Um, now the handout says that this edge of the inner title block, uh, the green rectangle, the left edge of the green rectangle needs to be an inch and a half away from the left edge of this reddish triangle, or the reddish rectangle. Uh, well, we've already offset it 9 sixteenths of an inch. So to get a half inch, that's going to be 15 sixteenths. So I left click. I'm going to drag in the direction I want to go. I'm going to keep on my uh, constraint, uh, my constraint line here, and I'm going to type in 15. Oh, there's, there's a little missing character, extra character, 15 slash 16, and push return. And there we go. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. All right, I'm going to draw another polyline. <clears throat> now I'm going to zoom in on this bottom corner so that you guys can see what I'm doing. The PL for polyline, press return. Now I'm going to hover my mouse over this corner, and I'm going to take it away. You see that little, that little green plus sign? That is my tracking reference. And you can see I've not, I've not left clicked on anything. You can see that I have this tracking line similar to when I was stretching that rectangle just a moment ago. That as long as I stay on this axis, this is going to help me out. So I'm locked into this axis and I haven't left clicked on anything yet. Well, what I can do is if I move my mouse, yeah, 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 it always says that. Close, go away. Come back over here. I'm going to move my mouse to the left. And I'm going to type 3 at the command prompt and push return. Now I'm drawing my line 3 inches away from that endpoint. That's what that was all about. I'm going to pan back up, zoom back a little, pan out. I'm just going to draw this polyline up until it intersects with the top green edge of the rectangle just like that. Press return, and I'm done. There we go. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do here is you notice these lines are all uh, super thin, and that's fine. So I'm going to highlight. I'm going to select these objects. And on my keyboard, I'm going to hold down the control key, and I'm going to push 1. <sighs> Forgot I'm working in a, a virtualized environment. Those of you working in boot camp, that will work just fine. Those of you who are working in parallels, come up here, click on the View menu, and click Properties. There we go, that's what I wanted to do. So what I want to do is I want to change the global width of all of these two polylines. I want to change the global width to an eighth of an inch. And you can see when it does its thing, boom! Now these lines are big and fat, just exactly like I want them to be. Okay. And you notice that this um, this is kind of overlapping some of the tools that I might want to use up here. Well, just like the layer uh, toolbar or the, the layer palette, if I right click, it says allow docking, I can anchor this to the left. And so my properties palette is just always going to live there. It's not going to take up any space until I want it to. I take my mouse away and it just disappears. Okay, so we've got a few more lines to draw. I'm going to start with a regular line this time. And I'm going to hover my mouse over that inner, over this endpoint. And you can see that I've got that little green plus sign again. That's got my uh, vector tracking enabled. I'm going to move my mouse up from that. I'm going to stay on my axis. Type 1 of the command prompt. Press return. And draw my line across. Stay on the horizontal lock axis and left click at that intersection. Press return. I'm done drawing that line. OK. The next item up is I'm going to use my offset command. I'm going to set it to three quarters of an inch. Press return. Select this line, and I'm going to offset it up three quarters of an inch. Press return. I'm done offsetting at that distance. I'm going to offset again, so I push return. 
I'm going to enter my offset distance of a half an inch. Press return again. And I'm going to select this object and I'm going to go, oh, come on, select. There we go. Up, up, and up. Push return. Okay, now I'm going to draw another polyline. PL for polyline. Push return. Spec specify my start point. I'm going to pick the end point of that last line that was offset. Now if I move my mouse, you can tell I've got that vector tracking again. I just hovered my mouse over there. Now some of you might want to, to make sure that you're drawing from an endpoint. You'll hover your mouse in and around and off and on that endpoint. If I hover my mouse on the endpoint for a moment, that tracking vector will show up. If I go back and hover my mouse over that end, same endpoint again, my tracking vector goes away. So you can turn on and off that tracking vector very easily. Let's go back. I'm going to turn him on. I'm going to move my mouse up. I'm going to stay on axis. I got off there. There we go. And I'm going to move, start my line 9 sixteenths up from there. Draw my polyline segment over until it crosses. Left click. I'm done. I push return. Now we need to change the thickness of the, this, uh, the, this polyline. And that's the reason why I drew a polyline instead of a regular line. So I'm going to highlight my polyline, come back over here to my properties window. Now one of the things that we can do here is you'll see it says start segment and end segment. I can change the start segment and end segment with widths independently of one another. So if I wanted this one to be a quarter of an inch, so highlight that. Now you can see that my polyline is thick on one end and thin on the other. You'll also notice that global width, the value is blank because it doesn't have a global width anymore. But if I select on global width and I type in an eighth of an inch and push return, then both start and end segments will become an eighth of an inch and it's the same thickness all the way across. So there we go. So I'm, I'm I've done, I'm done drawing my polyline. So one of the things that I have left to do is that I actually want to turn my line weight display on. I want to see the line weights that I've specified here in my uh, uh, the line weight properties in my layer dialog. Right now, I'm not seeing those. All I'm seeing is a line that's one pixel thick, or maybe two pixels thick. But I want to see those line weights. So I'm going to type LW display at the command prompt display, push return, and I want to set that new value to on, push return, and there we go. Now I can actually see the thickness of these lines, uh, but I'm looking at this and it doesn't really look all that different. <clears throat> well, right now, there, think of, think of uh, uh, line weight display being dependent on sort of the multiverse of AutoCAD, if you will. Uh, if you look down here at the bottom, you'll see it says model, and then layout one and layout two. Well, think of these as different universes within AutoCAD. Each drawing has its own different set of universes. And the model, model space, or the model space universe, if you will, let's just call it model space, it's got its own display rules when uh, line weights come into play. And it has nothing to do with what the real world thickness of those layers, of those uh, line weight properties are. But it, it's only trying to establish a relative thickness display based on um, how many pixels. So if I zoom out, then those, those lines that I drew are going to appear to be thicker than the, than the set width of the polylines I drew. If I zoom in, then those lines become thinner. And it, it's not that they're going to print any differently. It's because they only look differently on the screen. But we're done setting the line weight or the line work for all of this uh, all this information. I'm going to double click on the scroll wheel. If it'll let me, and zoom extents, and I, I zoomed it. My finger brushed against the uh, uh, against the scroll wheel, so I'm going to do that again. If it'll let me. Alternately, a quick way to zoom extents is type Z at the command prompt and then E, and that's a zoom extents. So where I'm at now. I've got this started, and I'm going to click on uh, the control button and save. So I want to save this document. Here we go. Here's all the blocks and everything that I've created right now. And I'm going to call this UNT title block. 
All right, we're done creating the line work, and in the next video, we're going to be dealing with the text. All right, see you in a minute.